Hello everyone, I am Duke James. Thank you for joining me for another campaign in EU4, Mew, and Texas, this time as Desmond in Ireland. So for this campaign, we're going to form Ireland and then conquer the English and probably the Scottish as well. And then that's the uh, two goals. So form Ireland, conquer England. Probably won't play after that just because then it becomes an England campaign and I want to do England win 3.0 releases. I want that to be my first campaign. So we're going to play as Desmond, form Ireland, conquer England, probably Scotland as well. So Desmond starts off with 15 development and two, both of their trade, both of their provinces are trade provinces. Let's see, our ruler is Earl Maurice Fitzgerald. He is a four to five. He is temperate, which gives national unrest and yearly prestige. And he has loose lips. Foreign spy detection, negative 25%, yearly prestige negative. So that's, uh, that yearly prestige cancels out. We have an heir. He is zero years old, just born. He is a two to one, Gerald Fitzgerald. So we are the uh, Gerald clan, the Fitzgerald clan actually. We are in Earldom, which is an Irish monarchy, which gives all of that stuff. Yeah, national manpower, attrition, land attrition, fort defense, income for vassals, monthly autonomy change, maximum centralization, negative 20, stability increase interval, manpower recovery speed, land force limits. We have 10 centralization out of 10 centralization. Our culture is Hiberno-Norman. Irish is not accepted. Even though that's what our provinces are. Interesting. We are rivaled with Butler and Burke, which are these two guys. We're rivaled with the two, two province guys. On this island Let's see our node is the North Sea node which is not an end node so if we conquer some provinces from England then we can move to the Northwest Atlantic node unfortunately the North Sea node does not flow into the Northwest Atlantic so there's a little bit of a weirdness going on in terms of the nodes. We start with naval ideas, which kind of sucks. Our uh, national ideas, we are endogamous communi communitarian family, hostile attrition, monthly war exhaustion, global spy defense, nationalism, stability increase threshold, global institution spread. We have a transport cost negative 20%, that kind of sucks. Uh, stability increase interval and hostile core creation cost on us, national unrest, yearly legitimacy, admin tech cost is pretty good. That national unrest is nice. This is not pretty good. Uh, prestige from land battles and fort defense. So fort defense is decent. Prestige from land battles. Uh, Diplo rep, cost to fabricate, negative 10%. So we can fabricate claims at 36 by network instead of 40, which is nice. And then a little bit of morale of armies. Our ideas. We got the uh, standard colonial ideas and these standard, whatever these are over here. These are our nation specific. The ones that we're going to focus on for the first part of the campaign are these three rows. These deal with conquering Ireland. And then this one is forming Ireland. In order to do that, you have to do all of these, and then you have to change your governments. Which which is right here. Put an end to the clan structure. We would change to a feudal monarchy. So we need admin tech of at least 15 or admin skill of five. And the big thing here is the influence of the Irish tribes has to be below 30%. So 
most of the land in Ireland is tribal so I'm probably going to use vassals to get around that because if I if I hold everything myself then the tribes should have a lot of influence so I wouldn't be able to do that we are Catholic it's pretty much everything there Go ahead and rival, not rival, ally, We're, we will ally Leinster. And just do default settings. Depending on how it works out, who allies who, I think I want to attack Munster first and uh, vassalize them. So pretty much there's going to be a lot of waiting for claims to come around. That's pretty much the opening move, because we don't start with claims, so we'll have to wait for those. All right, so that's done. We have claims now. So we can go ahead and attack the uh, Munster. They're allied with Tyr Connell. So I might as well call them in because they can only, they're only allied with Munster. They can only ally one person. So I could call in Leinster. I don't think I need to though. Probably save that for if I, when I attack Butler, probably call them in then. Let's go ahead and attack them. We'll go to the tribals. There's no difference between those two. Traveling minstrel. We gain five prestige and a skill one stability increase interval and prestige decay or 40% chance of gaining 50 stability points. Let's go ahead with the stability points. Did we get it? We did not. guys can come over it's a fort level two so it's gonna be a little bit of a pain I'm going to vassalize them eventually, but I think it's better for me to take the territory and then release them. Put that guy on there. All right, now we can begin this siege. These guys can't even walk over here. Hopefully it doesn't hurt too much. We don't have a siege general. 
which would help. I don't want to keep rolling though. Because I have no consort, so if my... I could make my ruler a general, but then I'd be stuck in a... Whatever that thing is. Regency. So I won't be able to attack anybody. For a long time. So I want him to survive for as long as possible. Also, I'll probably call this Dukes of Desmond. Because of the alliteration. Even though we're not... Uh, we're not a dukedom. We're an earldom. I don't think there's any way of making Tyrconnell a vassal without actually besieging down their province, which I don't want to do. Because it is another fort level 2. They'd give me five ducats. So a Merc would be out of the question if they're only going to give me five ducats. Would be nice to have a Merc army though, because then I wouldn't have to worry about manpower, but that's one of the benefits of vassalizing as well. You can use their manpower. Don't have to worry about his army, because he can't even walk over here. It's really fortunate. Fourteen percent. Losing about a hundred manpower a month. Maybe even a little bit more. Come on, thirty five. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna have to wait a little bit for the uh, war score to go to a hundred percent. But since I've fully occupied them, it should go to a hundred percent eventually. France is the paper con papal controller. White Horde is imploding, as White Horde usually does. It's 
Let's go ahead and switch Spy Networks to Burke. No manpower. That kind of sucks. Let's bank in on a thousand manpower from the tribes, but they don't want to give anything. It crashed. All right. Well, thank you for watching. We're back. All right, so I actually don't have to wait. I can just peace out Tier Connell. They'll give me a ducat. They can go away. These ships can protect trade. And I can take that province. Then I want to... Release them. Just immediately release them. They get a bunch of manpower. They'll probably build a troop, and that'll help me out in my further campaigns of conquest. Excellent, so now I can use one of their troops. Unless they might go to their estates as well, so they might even get two troops. They also give me 0 0.05 ducats. Which helps. A little bit. Let's have this guy go. Do a spy network on Burke. And then these guys are allied with Ulster, which might be more of the uh, same. They can't walk over here because they're pretty. Actually, only England separates them. So they might actually be able to come over here. So I'll probably call in Leinster when I fight them. Let's do a spy network on them. These ships together. I'm only losing point one ducats now. Ireland is really poor. Let's 
see if that changes. Hey, I'm uh not losing anything. Not gaining anything, but I'm not losing anything either. Nice. So I'll end this part here. Vassalized monster. And I'm in position to attack Butler. That's a good start. So I want to uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next part. Goodbye.